very stupid. Um, my biggest fear is that after lunch, everyone leaves and I'm talking to the chairs. <laughs> so thank you for staying. And thank you for inviting me to your gentle membership. It's an honor and privilege to be with some of the best supply chain managers. You see, I have a very deep affinity with profession. I started to build my career in various supply chain functions. My first job out of college was in operations research, doing recovery analysis for the second big supplier in the new company in the country. And later I worked for the US Charles in the insurance department, editing the newsletter, and uh, designing training programs for line supervisors in the plant. But that lasted only for two months. After that, I was unceremoniously assigned to the Sinchibus distribution center in order of policy. Later, the raw materials and bonded warehousing functions were added to my responsibility. I also did purchasing, inventory, production, and sales plans. At the time, it felt like punishment. In my mind, they were such uncool assignments <laughs> compared to marketing and advertising. Well, I don't think that's so anymore. I learned early in my career that I should not let my job define me. Instead, I defined my job, and to do it better than my predecessor. It was not a difficult thing to do because no one seemed to have lasted in those jobs. They were tough, uh, they were difficult. The operating environment was not as conducive. We had only calculators, manuals, spreadsheets at the time. Many of you were not in so you don't know, probably know about what I'm talking about. Depended on the telephone, there were no cell phones, telegrams, and then later on the telex machines came. So we had none of the enabling technologies and fancy algorithms that made life so much easier for you today. But then again, things were a lot simpler and more predictable then. The bar was not very high, so I raised it for myself and for my team so that we became the best performing team in the whole company. I also air conditioned the Finchman's warehouses, installed pipe in music, and asked for productivity incentives for my workers. And because I defined my job rather than having my job defined me, I took interest in what's happening around me. Before long, I was doing all the analytics about the business, about what products were selling, which customers were ordering what, but one day, President of the corporation flew in from San Francisco and started to ask a lot of questions. And I was the one providing the answers. So that was the start of a career that moved me from supply chain to crossover into brand and marketing. But many of my team members move on to bigger things as well. My DC supervisor became the operations director. Her Bolivar is not here and he would attest to all of these things that I'm saying. One of my factors became the sales manager. Others went back to school to pursue their dreams and became pilots, accountants, even a lawyer. And I too move on to bigger things. But I believe that they I brought out the best in them and they brought out the best in me. Just working together, treating them with dignity and respect, believing in them putting myself in their shoes and understanding their dreams and aspirations. And that's why I believe that supply chain is not about technology. It is not about all the head cranes and modern machines or robotics. It is about people. It is about people and institutional excellence. But I move on to bigger things. I never forgot the lessons that I learned from my early I did several things that don't show up on my LinkedIn profile, just in case some of you will be interested to look at it later. I did market research, <coughs> advertising and market research, product development, merchandising, until I became marketing director for the Middle In 1986, I became regional marketing director for the Far East, based in Hong Kong. And this was the start of my international career. This is also where I did my experimentation on how to go to market when you're servicing eight countries, when you're doing product development for eight countries with different seasonalities, 
those of you who surveys or work in power industries, power companies would understand. The demands of trying to come out with some MSQs every season, having drops every quarter or even every six months. So the product plan is high level, which is very, very difficult. The lead times are very long. You have to make sure that you have the right product for the right market. And I designed an adoption process, a product development and adoption process, a go to market process. That was very early, that was in 1996, 86, but no one talked about go to market processes. What it was was really asking everybody to come together from the ideation process, not as a sequential thing where you have hands on, as much as getting everybody to go together, to have a stake in it distributors, the licensees, manufacturers, contractors, suppliers of fabric, the advertising agencies. So when we were ideating, when we were coming out with the next concept or their next product line, they were all there. So they knew what they needed to do. And that was a process that was then replicated in other parts of the company because it worked so well. The region saw its best five years during that time. And I have, I'm very proud to tell you that my team is predominantly a team of Filipinos, doing product development, doing advertising and marketing, and also um, helping them with the adoption process. So we were actually helping every company in Korea to come together with a product line that would work in their market. Just to tell you that yes, we can. You know, in hindsight, the DC and warehouse functions and all those functions that I did in supply chain truly built my career. And I think I was asked how I transformed from running warehouses to running billion dollar businesses. And that's what freaking is so intrigued about. So if you run after me after my talk in another venue, I said, you, know, you have to come and talk to, my, to our people in, in supply chain because they need to hear your story. But I learned about the fundamentals of the business, products, costs, inventory turnover, demand velocity, customer service, lead times, waste reduction, planning and scheduling, and scale management, product life cycle management, recycling. Yes, I was doing recycling way before it was fashionable to do so, before we were talking about greening the environment, because I hated waste. So I'd take excess bottles and ribbons and fabrics, and make them into tote bags or wallets or shoe bags or shorts, and they became highly successful promotional items. In fact, the reason I became marketing director is because I think the head of international was visiting the Philippines one day, and he went into the distribution center and saw these products that were sitting there, and he said, what are these? I said I created these products. I created them out of waste that they were going to get, you know, throw away or put into a landfill or sell at very low prices. And he was so intrigued that someone was doing that. No one was doing that in Google. Two weeks time I was making quite a great But more importantly than the technical skills, I learned to be both skilled and skilled workers through empathetic leadership, putting myself in their shoes, understanding their dreams and aspirations, as I said before. Now, these lessons stayed with me when I moved off to the organization and began to lead business units as country general manager and later as chief executive officer. I think where I really caught it was in Japan, arguably the toughest market to operate in the world. Have a supply chain environment, now where you have subtle layers of distribution, but where you also have consumers with very high expectations and quality in the sun. And if you can survive, you can either swim or sink in that environment. Well, I like to swim. And also, again, it was because of my knowledge of supply chain and the way it works. But my end the understanding of the consumer, the business is all about, we, we, we debate too much about, is it logistics, is it supply chain? Forget the debate. Focus on the consumer. There is a consumer out there who wants their products and services. 
and everything that you do, whether it is demand creation or demand fulfillment, it is about that consumer. And whenever I go into a turnaround operation, and most of my assignments at Levi's and at Starbucks were turnaround operations, you always can see that maybe the strategy is right, and the strategy could even be very intriguing, it could be excellent, and where it suffers would be the execution. And when you look at the execution, you begin to look at margins and you look at inventory levels and all those stuff that you should really be watching, you know that the supply chain management is broken. And in apparel, you see that in inventories that are building up in your warehouses because they did not make it to the season, because they were late, because your suppliers weren't able to deliver, and so many other reasons. But very often, business breaks down because it does not have the proper supply chain processes or leadership. So when I went to Japan, the first thing that we had to do was to redesign our go-to-market processes around the consumer, around your expectations, and the overall business strategy. The business strategy was to go after the super <coughs> market. And therefore, it didn't make sense for us to be going to Bangladesh. I'm sorry to use that as an example. To China, because the consumer expected the best fabrics, the best construction, the best workmanship, I mean zero effect. They would only accept 0.2% effect. They, they could not even accept the products that came out of our own manufacturing facility in the world. So we had to redesign all the go to market processes. And it meant finding an outstanding leader for the supply chain division to rebuild relationships with suppliers identify strategic partners and getting them involved as early as the development process. With a three-tier product strategy, each requiring different work streams and sourcing requirements, having a great supply chain team internally and excellent external partners were non-negotiable. And thankfully, they delivered beyond expectations. And the brand was back to number one position from number four in two years' time. The same happened at Starbucks Park in Japan. There were two challenges to grow revenue and profitability in the existing stores and open at least two new stores every week to get to a thousand stores in three years' time. And there were different supply requirements for different stores and locations. And we also had a separate sourcing team for the many parts and items, machines that went into the building area for every new store. But I had an outstanding and very mature supply chain leader, trusted and respected by his team, his external supply chain partners, and trusted by the whole organization. And I trusted him. And never doubted that he and his team would deliver executional excellence. And that allowed me to focus on the future. I'll tell you. The both gentlemen, the one that I had at Levi's and the one that I had at Starbucks, ended up becoming CEOs. The first one became CEO for Oakley and later Bose, the sound equipment company. And the other 